And Yahweh said to Abram, Go forth from your land, and from your kin, and from your father's house, to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went forth as Yahweh had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. So Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go forth to the land of Canaan, thus they came to the land of Canaan. And Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem, to the oak of Morah. Now the Canaanite was then in the land. Then Yahweh appeared to Abram and said, To your seed I will give this land. So he built an altar there to Yahweh who had appeared to him. Then he proceeded from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east, and there he built an altar to Yahweh and called upon the name of Yahweh. And Abram journeyed on, continuing toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it happened as he drew near to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarai his wife, Now behold, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, and it will be when the Egyptians see you, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. Now it happened when Abram came into Egypt, that the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Therefore he treated Abram well because of her, and sheep and oxen and donkeys and male and female servants and female donkeys and camels came into his possession. But Yahweh struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Then Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her for myself as a wife? So now, here is your wife, take her and go. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev, he and his wife and all that belonged to him, and Lot with him. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there formerly, and there Abram called upon the name of Yahweh. Now Lot, who was going with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. And the land could not sustain them while living together, for their possessions were so abundant that they were not able to live together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanite and the Perizzite were living then in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me, if to the left, then I will go to the right, or if to the right, then I will go to the left. Then Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. This was before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were evil and sinners, exceedingly so, against Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which you see, I will give it to you and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can number the dust of the earth, then your seed can also be numbered. Arise, walk about the land through its length and breadth, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and came and lived by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to Yahweh. And it happened in the days of Amraphel king of Shinar, Ariok king of Elasa, 
Ketulamer king of Elam, and Tidal king of Goyim, that they made war with Bera king of Sodom, and with Bersha king of Gomorrah, Shernab king of Adma, and Shemeber king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zor. All these came as allies to the valley of Sidim, that is, the Salt Sea. Now for twelve years they had served Ketulamer, but the thirteenth year they rebelled. So in the fourteenth year Ketulamer and the kings that were with him came and struck the Rephaim and Ashtaroth Karnaim and the Zuzim and Ham and the Emim and Shavakiriathaim and the Horites in their Mount Seir, as far as El Perin, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to Enmishpat, that is, Kadesh. And they struck all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites, who were living in Hazazan Tamar. And the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zor, came out, and they arranged themselves for battle against them in the valley of Sidim, against Ketulamer king of Elam, and Tidal king of Goam, and Amraphel king of Shinar, and Ariok king of Elasa. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of tar pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, and they fell into them, but those who remained behind fled to the hill country. Then they took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food supply and departed. They also took Lot, Abram's nephew, and his possessions and departed. Now he was living in Sodom. Then a fugitive came and told Abram the Hebrew, now he was dwelling by the oaks of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner, and these were in a covenant with Abram. So Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, and he led out his trained men, born in his house, 318 in number, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. And he divided his men against them by night, he and his servants, and struck them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. And he brought back all the possessions, and he also brought back his relative Lot with his possessions, and also the women and the people. Then after he came back from striking down Ketulamer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine, now he was a priest of God Most High. Then he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Then he gave him a tenth of all. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give the people to me, but take the possessions for yourself. Then Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to Yahweh God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, so that you would not say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing except what the young men have eaten, and the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshcol, and Mamre, let them take their share. After these things the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram, I am a shield to you, your reward shall be very great. And Abram said, O Lord Yahweh, what will you give me? as I go on being childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Since you have given no seed to me, behold, one born in my house is my heir. Then behold, the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, This one will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body, he shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens, and number the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your seed be. Then he believed in Yahweh, and he counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am Yahweh who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to possess it. And he said, O Lord Yahweh, how may I know that I will possess it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, and a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and split them into parts down the middle and laid each part opposite the other, but he did not split apart the birds. Then the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. Now it happened that when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, terror and great darkness fell upon him. Then God said to Abram, Know for certain that your seed will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and they will be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. 
but I will also judge the nation to whom they are enslaved, and afterward they will come out with many possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace, you will be buried at a good old age. Then in the fourth generation they will return here, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Now it happened that the sun had set, and it was very dark, and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch, which passed between these pieces. On that day Yahweh cut a covenant with Abram, saying, To your seed I have given this land, from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenite and the Kenizzite and the Cadmonite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Rephaim and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Girgashite and the Jebusite. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian servant woman whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, Now behold, Yahweh has shut my womb from bearing children. Please go into my servant woman, perhaps I will obtain children through her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. And after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Abram's wife Sarai took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant woman, and gave her to her husband Abram as his wife. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. Then she saw that she had conceived, so her mistress became contemptible in her sight. And Sarai said to Abram, May the violence done to me be upon you. I gave my servant woman into your embrace, but she saw that she had conceived, so I became contemptible in her sight. May Yahweh judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant woman is in your hand, do to her what is good in your sight. So Sarai afflicted her, and she fled from her presence. Now the angel of Yahweh found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's servant woman, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. Then the angel of Yahweh said to her, Return to your mistress and humble yourself under her hands. Moreover, the angel of Yahweh said to her, I will greatly multiply your seed so that they will be too many to be counted. And the angel of Yahweh said to her further, Behold, you are with child, and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because Yahweh has heard your affliction. And he will be a wild donkey of a man, his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him, and he will dwell in the face of all his brothers. Then she called the name of Yahweh who spoke to her, You are God who sees, for she said, Have I even remained alive here after seeing him? Therefore the well was called Birlahiroi, behold, it is between Kadesh and Barid. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Now Abram was eighty-six years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to him. Now it happened that when Abram was ninety-nine years old, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, so that I may confirm my covenant between me and you, and that I may multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God spoke with him, saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. And no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will go forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you, throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your seed after you. And I will give to you and to your seed after you, the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God said further to Abraham, Now as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep, between me and you and your seed after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you. And every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations, one who is born in the house or one who is bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your seed. A servant who is born in your house or who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised, thus shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. 
But an uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her, and indeed I will give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a son be born to a man one hundred years old? And will Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a son? And Abraham said to God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before you. But God said, No, but Sarah your wife will bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I will bless him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this season next year. So he finished talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's household, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the very same day, as God had spoken with him. Now Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the very same day Abraham was circumcised, and Ishmael his son. Now all the men of his household, who were born in the house or bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem, and call out to her that her warfare has been fulfilled, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received from the hand of Yahweh double for all her sins. A voice is calling, prepare the way for Yahweh in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain, and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of Yahweh will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. A voice says, Call out. Then he answered, What shall I call out? All flesh is grass, and all its loving kindness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of Yahweh blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Dig yourself up on a high mountain, O Zion, bearer of good news. Raise up your voice powerfully, O Jerusalem, bearer of good news. Raise it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, Lord Yahweh will come with strength, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd he will shepherd his flock. In his arm he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and encompassed the heavens by the span, and calculated the dust of the earth by the measure, and weighed the mountains in a balance and the hills in a pair of scales? Who has encompassed the spirit of Yahweh, or as his counselor has informed him? With whom did he take counsel, and who gave him understanding? And who taught him in the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and made him know the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are counted as a speck of dust on the scales. Behold, he lifts up the coastlands like fine dust. Even Lebanon is not enough to burn, nor its beasts enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are counted by him as non-existent and utterly formless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare with him? As for the graven images, a craftsman casts it, a goldsmith plates it with gold, and a silversmith fashions chains of silver. He who is too impoverished to make such a contribution chooses a tree that does not rot. He seeks out for himself a wise craftsman to prepare a graven image that will not be shaken. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? 
Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who inhabits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to inhabit. It is he who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth utterly formless. Scarcely have they been planted. Scarcely have they been sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, but he merely blows on them, and they wither, and the storm carries them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me that I would be his equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these stars, the one who leads forth their host by number, he calls them all by name. Because of the greatness of his vigor and the strength of his power, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from Yahweh, and the justice due me passes by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weary, and to him who lacks vigor he increases might. Though youths grow weary and tired, and choice young men stumble badly, yet those who hope in Yahweh will gain new power. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Coastlands, listen to me in silence, and let the peoples gain new power. Let them come forward, then let them speak. Let us draw near together for judgment. Who has awakened one from the east whom he calls in righteousness to his feet? He gives up nations before him and has dominion over kings. He makes them like dust with his sword, as the wind-driven chaff with his bow. He pursues them, passing on in peace, by a way he had not come with his feet. Who has worked and done it, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, Yahweh, am the first, and with the last, I am he. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and have come. Each one helps his neighbor and says to his brother, Be strong. So the craftsman strengthens the smelter, and he who smooths metal with the hammer strengthens him who beats the anvil, saying of the soldering, It is good. And he strengthens it with nails, so that it will not be shaken. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob whom I have chosen, seed of Abraham my friend, you whom I have strongly taken hold of from the ends of the earth, and called from its remotest parts, and said to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will make you mighty, surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you, but will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and non-existent. For I am Yahweh your God, who strongly takes hold of your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, declares Yahweh and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I have made you a new, sharp threshing sledge with double edges. You will thresh the mountains and pulverize them, and will make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them, and the wind will carry them away, and the storm will scatter them. But you will rejoice in Yahweh. You will boast in the Holy One of Israel. Matthew, chapter 1, Forefathers of Yeshua the Messiah. The book of the genealogy of Yeshua HaMashiach ben David, ben Avraham. Abraham fathered Isaac. Isaac fathered Jacob. Jacob fathered Judah and his brothers. Judah fathered Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered Ram. Ram fathered Aminadab. Aminadab fathered Nashon. Nashon fathered Salmon. 
Salmon fathered Boaz by Rahab. Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth. Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David the king. David fathered Solomon by the wife of Uriah. Solomon fathered Rehoboam. Rehoboam fathered Abijah. Abijah fathered Asa. Asa fathered Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat fathered Joram. Joram fathered Uzziah. Uzziah fathered Jotham. Jotham fathered Ahaz. Ahaz fathered Hezekiah. Hezekiah fathered Manasseh. Manasseh fathered Ammon. Ammon fathered Josiah. And Josiah fathered Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah fathered Shealtiel. Shealtiel fathered Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel fathered Abiud. Abiud fathered Eliakim. Eliakim fathered Azor. Azor fathered Zadok. Zadok fathered Achim. Achim fathered Eliud. Eliud fathered Eleazar. Eleazar fathered Matan. Matan fathered Jacob. And Jacob fathered Joseph, the husband of Miriam, from whom was born Yeshua, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations. From David until the Babylonian exile are fourteen generations. And from the Babylonian exile until the Messiah are fourteen generations. The Miraculous Birth of Yeshua Verse 18 Now the birth of Yeshua the Messiah happened this way. When his mother, Miriam, was engaged to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Ruach HaKodesh. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, made up his mind to dismiss her secretly. But while he considered these things, behold, an angel of Adonai appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Ruach HaKodesh. She will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by Adonai through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from his sleep, he did as the angel of Adonai commanded him, and took Miriam as his wife. But he did not know her intimately until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Yeshua. Verse 19. 